Hi there! In this video, we are going to be handling the search functionality in ASP.NET Core. So, what we are doing, we are filtering information from a list of data. And here we have a table with a few data in it, with the four or five rows. And we are, filtering, we are going to be filtering it by the type of information that we want. So, firstly, uh, we need to go to our project. We need to go to the HTML page of where this index view that we just saw is. So uh, we'll go to views, customer, index.html. And on top of the page, we need to input a form. So the form needs some attributes for the name of the controller where the information from this form will need to go to. Next, we specify the name of the function that was index, the name of the function of the controller. And then we need to specify a method, which in our case has to be a get method. Usually forms have a post method, but in our case, when we filter data from in a page, we need to make it a, a get method. So this will make it get. And inside the form, we need to add an input. Just one tag. The type of the input need to be a text. We'll give it a name, like uh, search something. And for a few styling, we need to add a class of form control, which is a bootstrap class. Then uh, we need a button for the, in order to submit the information from this form. We make it of type submit and we give it a value, which basically means whatever will be displayed on the button. And of course, we need to add some styling as well. So uh, let's add some more styling to the input because uh, we need it to be like, for example, like half of the line, like half of the row. If we leave it as is, uh, it's gonna take a whole row. So in Bootstrap, where whenever you you add the class, so whenever you have a row, it takes. 12 imaginary spots and if you specify as a class like call column 6 it takes 6 of 12 pieces that a bootstrap line has so this is just some bootstrap theory right there but you can see in the display the input form comes should come until the middle of the page. Okay, so uh, we've made some mistake in the button while styling it.
maybe by removing the one tag it has to work but okay <laughs> it made it worse okay so i think the mistake here is that uh, this shouldn't be a, so the the styling should be as a button but we need to make it uh, an input not a button Okay, so everything looks much better now. We can make it, we can make the input a little bit uh, smaller. So four, if we make a column four there, it has, it take, it should take one third of the line of the row, something like here yeah it looks a little bit better so now we just need to go to the index function in the customer controller in order to handle the information that we get from the form so uh, firstly we need to make uh, this is here, it's called the link query, or which is a language integrated query. Basically, uh, the, what this does is just loops through the information from the database. It's, it seems a little bit like an SQL uh, type of language. Basically, we are just looping through the customers in the context in the database then we need to take a parameter an argument from the form which is which was a string and we can name it here search string so uh, we should check if this argument is null or not And here uh, we're giving it a new value to the customer variable that we created above. So uh, we are writing here a lambda expression, which basically what we are doing here is just writing some conditions for the information that we're looping through in the database. So we're finding the customers where the name, where their name contains is a method that we write contains this argument that we take from the form. So here we can return the view, but we can just copy what we have down below. We can just substitute the context that customers that we have down below with the customers variable that we created now. We can make this customers, just customers without the underline. And then we can copy this as is and input it above. This looks fine for the moment. We can check by running the project.
Okay, so we can try Sean because we have two people with Sean name. And as you can see, it filters all the information that have the name of the argument that we are writing the form. So John works as well. Okay, so another thing that I forgot to mention is that the contains method in our case, uh, the contains method that we are using here is case insensitive. So if we try to make the letters uppercase or lowercase, it doesn't matter. I think this only works when we have a SQL Server database. In the SQLite, uh, if we had used the SQLite database, it wouldn't be the same. It would be case sensitive. So we can try here to change it and not filter the information from the name, but from the status. I just changed one line there in the function. And now we are just filtering information from the, from the status, from whatever we want, from whatever we want from the columns. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was it for this video and I will see you in the next.